you're looking for a podcast about the most yoking coffee, then you must be thinking of another podcast. <laughs> Glorious <laughs> Muscles! Good evening, Kelsey. Good evening, Robert. How are you? I'm lovely. How are you? I am. I never say that. I'm always like, meh. I'm pretty fantabulous, I think, man. Well, fucking good. All right. What's called your fantabulousness? Life has taken some turns. First of all, can I crack into this real quick? Oh, let's crack into it. I have to tell you about my special Dr. Pepper that I got. (laughs) Just a regular old plain Dr. Pepper. No. I got the Dr. Pepper Dark Berry one. Oh, I've been hearing good things about that one, actually. That was a fonsa flavor. I'm ready for fonsa. it. Say it. Crack it open. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, a yeah. good bottle fully. I'm not a big plastic bottle person, though. Same. They are okay, but... Ooh, pungent, <laughs> dude. It is like just berries blueberries punching the nose fist up the nose <sighs> it smells like sweet tarts Ooh. there ate the flavors top notes <laughs> creaminess that's about a nine dude it's pretty good oh, okay it kind of tastes like sweet tarts a little bit i wish i could have a sip it, the blue label's really throwing me off. It looks like a Pepsi product. I know. It's so weird. It's and scary. it doesn't really say. It just says dark berry. It's not like it's more cherry or like any one thing. I don't really know yeah. what the dominant flavor is supposed to be. Well, the thing about Dr. Pepper is it's 23, fru- 23 fruit flavors. That's hard well, to say. Which which fruit did they flirt with the most this time? <laughs> this one's just the 23 berries. It's not bad. I'm kind of into that. All right. Good. I've got a new beverage myself tonight. Okay. So I uh, I do HelloFresh, and sometimes they just, like, toss random shit that they're selling in there. Uh, so this beverage was provided for free, but not for review purposes, so I can tell you guys what I actually think of it. Okay. Uh, it's another one from Polar Seltzer, who I've had before. Okay. Yeah. And I, HelloFresh, like, read my oh. mind because this one is pink apple and lemon flavor. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, so I'm ready to try this bad boy. Oh, my God. I am, like, in love with this Dr. Pepper. Yeah, you're making some faces about it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, it was crispy. That was oh, a good yeah, crack. Oh, yeah, that was a good crack. Oh, man, it smells like a honey crisp. Before you take a sip. Okay. Do you sniff your drinks before you drink them most times? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do, too. Everyone you gotta looks get at me sniff. so weird. But, like, see, maybe, maybe I could get into wine. Because, like... <laughs> You gotta sniff it first. You gotta sniff it. You see know? how it is, especially with a new beverage. Like even pre Topi, we're sniffing drinks. Oh, my God, <laughs> it's so good smelling. Okay, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a sip of this. Yeah, do it. All right, smells like Honey Crisp. The uh-huh. face does not say that to me. No, it. So, hold on, let me get another one. <laughs> Aerate it. You gotta. It tastes like um, like a like a manzanita sole, but without the sugar. <laughs> okay. You know that Mexican apple soda? Yeah. It's got a great after flavor. Like I'm just breathing out apples right now. This is so it's got some mouth feel. Oh yeah, there's a mouth feel about this. I love okay. it actually. This is really good shit. Good. I would like to try one then because I want. I mean, I love apple smells. So the idea that yes. I'm just walking around spewing apples <laughs> from my mouth while just talking sounds phenomenal <laughs> yeah, to me. Breathing out, I feel like I'm. Like, I've just freshly bitten into an apple. This is good shit. That sounds like the drink for horse or apple season. Right yes, there. absolutely. I was cleaning my office today, and I found a list of um, rejected apple names. I can't wait to pull those out next season. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll be surprised. You will. First thing in my happy trail of thought here. Okay. I went to Best Buy for something. A Blu-ray? No. I went for something... Ooh, Taylor was... This is not a dig at Taylor. We've already had a discussion. We're, uh, we are simpatico, okay? Okay. Taylor didn't want the Fitbit. Okay. She was like, I want the bigger Fitbit. Uh, That's like more like the Samsung watch or an Apple watch. Yeah. yeah. She wanted the like 
the big good one. Yeah. So we went to get it. And when we were there, I was like, well, I mean, I'm not going to like not walk around because I'm still <laughs> trying to see something in the store that I've yet to see in person. Okay. So I'm walking around and I'm looking at all the TVs and I was like, yep, they still don't have it. Let's fucking jet. And this guy walks up like, hey, you guys need anything? And I was like, well, I was here looking for the new Samsung OLED and you guys don't have it. So I'm good. And he's like, yeah, we do. <laughs> Turn around, my man. <laughs> Directly behind you. Yeah. So I turn around and I'm like, I, where? how did I miss this TV? It's clearly oh labeled what it is. And so I'm staring at it and he's like, you want me to talk about it? I was like, yes, please. <laughs> Tell me all about it. Just p- put your head on my shoulder and whisper to me. <laughs> So he's telling me all about this TV, right? Okay. And I'm staring at it. Oh, my God. That is the best TV I've ever seen in my life. Oh, wow. I must have that TV. I must have it. I must add it to the collection. I must have. (laughs) It's my OLED TV, which looks the best still. Uh Uh-huh. But it gets so much brighter. (laughs) It's got way less burn-in chance. Because okay. of how it operates. So so this is the Samsung OLED that you're looking at? Yes. What OLED do you have? I have an LG one. Okay. I have the people who, like, created the OLED. The pioneers. As it stands today. Okay. The problem with it is, the one problem people have is that it's not very bright of a TV. Okay. So, it's great for me because I live like a goblin. <laughs> I live in the dark. Yes. I don't need it to be very bright, but for, you know, your light dwellers who enjoy watching TV on a Sunday afternoon with the windows open or whatever, <laughs> you might not be able to see the TV very well. It's good for nighttime viewing, dark room. That's okay. where it excels. So it's cave TV. Yes. This OLED by Samsung can also mm. work in the day, but at night, like the whole thing is... When I learned about HDR, I was like, I mean, HDR, like, makes a difference, but I'm not really understanding quite the appeal of, like, the whole, like, bright highlights thing. Yeah. That's because I have an OLED. It's not bright enough to wow me with those, like, punchy images. So while I think it looks good, I need the Samsung TV pre-OLED. Like, I need, like, an LED TV for that to work well. Okay. But LED TVs look so much shittier. Mm-hmm than OLED, so I've never ventured back with them. You're just forever in a television conundrum, just orbiting yeah, around all the different TVs that exist on the market. But it's time. Okay. I mean, I'm not getting it. It sucks uh, that I'm not getting it, but... I don't know. The look on your face right now says you're oh, about so to purchase good, it. Taylor walked away from me in the sky. <laughs> I would, too. She literally <laughs> was, like, kind of staring at us and was like... You know, I have the watch that I came in to buy, like, in my hand. God. Can we go? And I was just like, one, 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 one. hold on. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. This, this salesman. This TV's quite beautiful, but I will not be buying it. And he goes, I have another really cool one. And I was like, well, where's that bitch at? <laughs> so then he shows me some other random TV that I had no idea what it was. But I liked it, too. It was really pretty. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we're looking at the TV. Okay, so I never left OLED because... LEDs look worse considerably compared to one. Okay. Then last year they made the mini LED one, and it's like as close as you can get without your eyeballs getting wet, right? Okay. But now that they've made an OLED, they've literally taken the LG technology and kind of merged it in with their stuff. So it's like it is the best of both worlds. Yeah. The reviews for it have called it the TV game changer. I mean, it is the leap indifference that oled was like seven years ago when that first came out so it's the next big thing it is the next thing and i looked at it and i saw it with my eyeballs yeah and i believe it okay it was disgustingly beautiful i was like a tv can't look this way and he's like here it is and i was like it can't look this way and he's like but it does and i was like it can't look this way my man <laughs> It's impossible. This is smoke and mirrors. What is this witchcraft and wizardry? So beautiful. And I'm mad because it is way more expensive than the the mini LED one that I was like set on. Yeah. So I'm just pulling up quick numbers now. 
So this OLED one only comes in 55 and 65. Wow. No okay. smaller and no bigger. Have they just like stopped making smaller TVs? I I never see a 32 inch for sale anymore. Oh, dude, they are still there. Okay. Actually, the big market is the 40 inches. Okay. That's 40 a inch size that is I a just big market. I never see those. Like we used to get the 32s when we were living the apartment life, and then since yeah. we've got a house, it's always like 55 or bigger. So yeah, I didn't know. That 75 plus is like the majority of where people go. Jesus. Like, that's where the big TV sales are, are the that's really big ones. Fucking big TVs, dude. Dude, to me, 55, 55 is good, man. Yeah. That's enough TV for one man. You know, I don't, I have no idea what size our TVs are. I bet you if I asked Richard, he'd be like, they're all 75. <laughs> like, I, I don't even have. I bet you got 65s. Maybe. And I want a 65, like, real bad. But 55 is enough. Like, my TV is enough. I have a 55, and I remember thinking, this is so astronomically huge, I could never want a bigger one. It's enough real estate. And I want the 65. Oh, my God. But that's my cap. If I got a 75, that would be, like, a dedicated theater room. You know what I mean? Like, it's built into the wall crazy shit. Right. I could never own that just as, like, that's what I play Uncharted on. (laughs) 65 is good enough for that. I want a TV that's built into the wall, though. Like, where it has a recess, you know, that you can just, like, push Mm -hmm. it back into. I want one of those so bad. I don't know why. Some of these TVs... So, Samsung has one called the Frame. Okay. That is so thin, and its uh, inputs are in a separate box. So, it just sits on the wall like a picture frame. That's so cool. And then the cables go and plug in somewhere totally separate from, like, the display. It's pretty cool. So I wanted the mini LED stuff, right? That's what I was telling Ismail. This is the one. We have no need to do anything else. Yeah. That 55 is $1,300. Okay. That's cheap for I mean, I guess. a like, flagship TV. <clears throat> yeah. That OLED one, 55 right now, is on sale. And it's 2100 Holy shit. That is almost 1000 more. Oh, my God. But it is $1,000 better looking, though. That's a fact. Okay. The 65 inch for the mini one yeah. is 1600 That's 400 more than the other 55 That's not a lot of a difference. Yeah, it's not bad. That's a good price to me still. For a 65 that's decent. The 65 in that OLED is $3,000. No, no. It's on sale for twenty eight hundred, but it is a three thousand dollar TV. That's it not is a sale. Double the price of this other technology. My God! But damn, if it don't look nice though. <laughs> like I want to go back to Best Buy and just sit and stare at it some more. Yeah. I really want to know. Can I just go in there and be like, can I can can I play something on it? Like, can I try out the content that I want to see? Yeah. Because if it's worth it. I just got a debt consolidation loan that paid off this credit card. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Payments aren't due on that for a little while. Jesus, you're going to walk in there with your, like, copy of Uncharted and be like, could I borrow your TV? Dude, that's what I use to (laughs) um, calibrate my TVs. Of course it is. I have a specific scene because when you look this direction, there's sky and ocean. And when you turn this way, you're seeing, like, jungle stuff. So you can see greens and blues, and you kind of have, like, a well-rounded anywhere you want to do an image It is ridiculous to me that you have that, like, in your mind, in your catalog. You're just like, this is how I calibrate TVs. But it it just makes sense for who you are as a person. Yeah, dude. I know. and, And the trailer for that game is the thing I use to test every device that I buy. Oh, my God. It is the trailer for Uncharted 2. (laughs) <laughs> Every new phone, crank the volume up all the way. Highest quality, looks good. It's a good device worth having. If it doesn't look good, device is shit. There's Never one buy. billion views on that YouTube video, and they're all Robert. <laughs> that is a fact. <laughs> I mean, I've tested other people's devices. Like, can I see your thing? Looks good, man. There you go. <laughs> I wish there was a way to see how many times you viewed a video in YouTube. Like, oh, how many? I of the- don't want to know that. My most watched video is definitely male shrimp. I was I was trying to think of what mine would be. It's or forehead probably, shave cut, honestly. 
but I think I watched for- Forehead Shave Cut probably like pre YouTube. Which exclusively. one's that one? It's the fucking. It's just a shittily drawn animation that I, Desi and I say, random stuff from all the time. Like you want some cinnamon before you go. It's like it's just full of stupid. I'm gonna have to watch that one because yeah. I mean, sh- y- you and her got me sold on. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Rejected. Yes, Don Hurts called Rejected. Yeah, where it's all my spoon is too big. <laughs> yes, I say that shit way too much. My spoon is too, too big. big. I'm gonna look up uh, Forehead Shape Cut right now and see if it's still on YouTube because it's such an ancient Flash animation. Like, yeah, wow. I'm trying to think. I I think my tops would either be the Uncharted Two trailer, or like, what's my comfort video? I think it's probably Taylor's least favorite video of mine. <laughs> Two girls one up. No, it's the girl singing. Britney Spears is toxic in the shower, just like throwing food all over herself. Oh my God. I hate that. video. I fucking love that video. It is so good. It's the best. I found a version of forehead shave cut. That is two minutes and 47 seconds. And then there's one that says forehead shave cut updated. It's three minutes and 24 uh, seconds. I, I don't know if I've seen that one. I made Richard watch this like early on in our relationship. I was like, you need to understand me. <laughs> Okay. I did learn this, though. No. This sucks. You can't see how many times you've watched a video. Okay. But you can sign into a website that'll tell you how much time you've spent on YouTube. Like, in in its entirety? Like, daily. Like, how much you've watched today, yesterday, all of last week, your average... It does a bunch of stuff, but... Show that to Richard and be like, this is how much YouTube he watched. (laughs) I don't know how he keeps up with all of his videos, man. Does he pod fast like me? Because that's how I watch all of mine. I don't think so, because he'll... Like, I'll pick up his phone if he gets a text message and I'm handing it to him or whatever. And I see that he has 15 notifications from YouTube videos. I'm like, are you going to watch these? And he'll be like, yeah, I'll watch them later. And then I'll catch him napping with the phone on his chest with a YouTube video playing. And I'll go to pause it. And he's like, hey, I'm watching that. Like a dad with golf. Dude, that's what I do all day at work, though. <laughs> so, like, my my YouTube intake a day is, like, eight plus hours. My God. I mean, I live on YouTube. I go to YouTube if I'm looking for a specific thing and then sometimes I'll find a rabbit hole and be like, that's so interesting. Recommend a video and I'll spend a couple hours just going down, you know, yeah. whatever algorithm feeds me. But that's what it used to that, be. But now it's become, well, so I started watching Amber, you know, uh-huh. and those are like three hour videos a piece. That's too much. Like I'd watch those. Then I got into the berserk deep dives. Yes. And then I got into the dude that makes the swords and he's running like hour long videos on how he's forging <laughs> these swords. And I'm like, I gotta know. God. But most of those I watch like on 1.5 times speed. So right. I'm in taking a three hour video in two hours. That's not bad. I like, you know, but I'm on it like all day. Richard does watch useful stuff. We bought a lot of like good products based on like he'll... He watches this guy that reviews power tools and he compares okay. them in the most like granular way. He'll he'll buy See, like, like that. it's pretty cool. He'll buy a bunch of different batteries for one drill and then like compare. This is how it screws in this type of screw or this type or this type. And yeah, how many screws can you screw before you have to replace the battery? Or how fast does it go? How fast is it? Mm-hmm. How hard That's does it nice. torque the screw or whatever? He gets so granular with it and it's it's good, interesting information. But like. It's just so much. I mean, yeah. But Which isn't, it's that probably... what, isn't that what a YouTube dad has to do, though? I guess. <laughs> you got to know. So at, so at a moment's notice when there's someone in dire need and they're like, I don't know which battery can screw in these screws the most. You're like, I fucking know. Richard could just wander the aisles of Home Depot and like help youngsters, honestly. I did the work for you, young man. <laughs> this is the battery you seek. So... Anyway, the TV's beautiful. Please, if you care about seeing TVs in any way that are beautiful and melt your eyeballs, you got to check out this TV. It's gorgeous. All right. It's fucking gorgeous. Taylor looked at it and was like, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, most people should feel that way. Okay. But I, I thoroughly loved it. I'm glad. Then 
I do want to go a little bit into this because we've talked about the new PlayStation subscription tiers. Yes. And when it went live, I told everybody, I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> but then I did it. So I did go for the top tier. Of course you did. And I just wanted to, because I just wanted to know. Just got to know. So they did prorate me. Okay. For the length of service that I had left. So my PlayStation Plus doesn't run out until November 2023. So wow. they charged me next year and the rest of this year for that difference. Up, up front. front? Oh, fuck. That sucks. Yeah. So I paid $83. Okay. Which I was like, that's not bad. I mean, it's not, but, but like, like up okay. front? Why'd they do but it yeah, up, like front? up front? Because they're bad. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to defend how they're running this service right yeah. now because it is it is bad. It's rough. And, it, well, that's that's the reason why I really didn't want to do it, because I don't approve of how they're doing it. But I wanted to know, is it worth it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and no. Okay. I think one day in the future, you'd be stupid not to have it. All right. If they put their fucking games on it. They've got nothing on there. PlayStation 3 games, it's too good a selection. Okay. Oh, PlayStation 3 games is a phenomenal selection, but you have to stream them. That sucks. Now, you and I are blessed with gigabyte internet. Yeah, so, like, we could stream it. That's not going to be a problem for us. But I remember having 30 megabytes at one point in my life. Yeah. And a lot of people still do. Right. They're going to have an awful time trying to stream God of War 1 on the new PlayStation service. They're not going to have a fun time. That's going to be a poor experience. And that is... That is the majority of the U.S., though. Yeah. I've heard, like, middle America, like, all the, like, centralized states, that's where the high speeds are. And it's, like, the coast where it really slows down. Really? That's odd. Why is that the way it is? Yeah, I've heard that, like, it gets better, like, the further inland you go. And then as you go out, you get slower. I would think it would be the opposite. Like, the coast would have really good internet. And then the inside is bad. Because, like, generally, the interior of America is where stuff isn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Texas is one of the first people to get the gigabyte internet. Yeah. And we're smack dab in the middle. Yeah, you know? that's true. So, I guess I can see it. But I bought the tier. I paid the 80 whatever. And I was like, all right, what's on here? So, I went to PlayStation 3. And, my God, kind of cried. Oh. I never thought I would find a way to play Old God of War again. Okay. Because you're not going to be able to play it backwards compatible on a PS5. I can play God of War 1. And I have been. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and it's so good still. Good. I turned it on and Taylor goes, how many times have you played this fucking game? Oh my god. And I was like, too fucking many. But not enough. So I was, I just played through like the opening bit and she was like, god damn, this game is <laughs> brutal. And I was like, yeah, I was 15 thinking this is the best. Oh my god. You fucking grab a Hydra and stab uh, the mast of a ship through his mouth out his eye hole, man. Oh, my God. Phenomenal game. All right. So anyway, (laughs) to give some context (laughs) as to why he's ripping people apart in the one that we played. Yeah. I played God of War 2. That was the first one that I tested it with because it was up on the top of the list. Uh Uh-huh. And it works fine because I've streamed games. Yeah. I beta tested... Uh, PlayStation Now when it was first coming out, which was oh. their streaming service thing. Yeah. Do you know why I never subscribed to it? Because it was streaming? It didn't work, dude. Yeah. It was awful. Every game I played, the latency and lag was so bad. Like, you'd press jump, and you'd fucking jump five seconds later. You cannot that... play a game like that. Horrific. Now, that was... I mean, I beta tested it. Did it get better over time? I don't know. Never tried it again. Yeah. I'd rather own a fucking game. But stepping from my beta day to me playing it Monday, that was a big... I mean, I played God of War 2, the opening level, and was like, this feels like totally normal. Good. This this feels like a fine game. But again, I am blessed with gigabyte internet. You cannot stress enough, your internet speed will thoroughly decide how, how you feel about it. Yeah, for sure. So, PlayStation 3 games, great. PS2 games, horrible selection. PS1 games, even worse selection. There is no point to it. Yeah. Having premium now 
if I didn't want it for Taylor to play the Ratchet and Clank games because she got really into Ratchet and Clank when we played the PS5 one. Right. She wants to play the old ones. Here they are. She can play them. That's basically the sole reason I got the premium service was that so, so she could play those games. And I mean, I guess if it's it's worth the price of that, right? Because you're getting a few different games and it's 83 bucks. So, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm getting like 700 games. There's 700 games for me that I just got instantly by paying 80 bucks. Yeah, but you're not going to play 700 games. Like, no, they all suck. <laughs> yeah. So you're paying for Ratchet and Clank essentially. Yes. Which that price is fine. If I were going to have a service like what I wanted, yeah. I would definitely get the middle one. Because you get PS4 and PS5 games. Okay. That's like where the meat of the good stuff is going to be. Yeah, but that's the thing. You get the good ones. I just got Demon Souls for free. Oh shit, all right. I just got Returnal for free and I started Returnal and I was like Fuck, this game's so good! But <laughs> okay. I never wanted to pay full price. Yeah. And now I have it. And apparently that middle tier will be where they put, like, the first party games. Okay. That top tier will be good when Twisted Metal's on there. I, yeah. I can play the whole suite of those. I, I can play all the old Crash games. I can play Spyro. Give me the old, old good stuff. The one most people are mad about, Metal Gear Solid's not there. Ah, uh, okay. And you know what? I'm mad about that because I never played them. <laughs> And I would like to. And that would yeah. be the perfect way. But it's not there. They're giving me five that's, games and two of them are worms. That's surprising, honestly, they don't have the Metal Gear Solid games. Because those are like flagship shit. I know. So, I think two to three years down the road, the top tier is good. But as it stands today, that middle tier, kind of dumb not to get the middle tier. Okay. Because you get some good games. You get Ghost of Tsushima for free. Oh, in yeah. There. I mean, you get good, like, heavy hitting games. But the problem is, I think it's really good if you just got a PlayStation. Okay. Most of those games that are in that service, I already own. Okay. <laughs> I own Ghost of Tsushima already. I own Death Stranding already. Yeah. Most of the big hitters, we've already bought. So a lot of PlayStation people are kind of like, yeah, but I own all the good ones already. Yeah. Because they're good. And this wasn't an option at the time. So right now, you're maybe getting what Like, I'm to me, it's Demon Souls and Returnal. That's the two big things that I'm like, cool, I didn't have to buy these. Yeah. But those were launch titles that are two years old now. That's nuts. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's okay. I did it so I could try it. I do think it works. But it's, it's really going to come down to what do you want. Right. And for me, you... the middle is what I want. Yeah. As long as you can tailor your experience to what you need, you may as well do it, right? I mean, I'm not going to say no to being able to play God of War 1 and 2 again. Because <laughs> I haven't played them in two console generations. Like, My God. It's been a minute, and I missed it. And it's very good again. So I'm enjoying that about it. Good. I'm glad that it's been able to provide that for you. But I do want to give you this before we move on. Okay. It was playing God of War 2. I played it for seven minutes. Okay. Got to the sex part. Oh my God. Seven minutes? Like, I mean, seven minutes, like early. <laughs> oh my right God. there. Maybe. That's so fast. Maybe, maybe 10 minutes, right? All right. I played through the entire opening of part one, but I knew exactly what to do and I was really good at it. So I did it in 20 minutes. Okay. Which it should take you maybe 30 the first time and got to the sex part. Because I was like playing through the first <laughs> level and, and I was like, hey, I was playing part two today. I already had sex by now. Kratos don't waste no time. No, we don't. Got to get it in. So just so you know, I mean, I kind of forgot how early it was, but it's like within the opening 10 minutes. Like, <laughs> Immediate. Like it's, it opens it's and he's there. fucking. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Game begins. Dick out. All right. <laughs> um, if that is not a slogan right there. <laughs> are you ready for the newest, latest game? Game begins. Dick out. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. I need to see if that was on the marketing material for part two. But Kratos is dick. <laughs> Just game begins. Dick out. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, he's wearing a loincloth. It's easy access. That is true. That's very true. Nothing to unbuckle. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> um, I did the thing this so week. You did a thing. I did okay. a thing. Uh, okay, so I've talked at length before about how Instagram ads come for my soul. And yeah. how half the time it's just like shit that I don't want, would never need, would never desire to have in my life. However, <laughs> Instagram has dialed it in now and they started giving me ads for like 3D printing stuff. And they were like, they were like, do you want these free 3D print models? And I w- was thinking, you know, like that, w- that would be cool if I had, you know, a 3D printer and I don't did have one. Did you think it or did you <laughs> say it? I, I think I just thought it, but you know how Instagram just like, sees through the soles of your eyes yeah it like read your eyes and was like oh she's she she needs a printer yeah so i started getting ads for 3d printers and i got ads for um filament printers which i which is like, what i'm used to for those yeah for like two solid months i was getting ads for like micro center you can save like the original price of the printer is 2.99 and then it's on sale for 1.99 that's and then still it's on, not bad and then it's on sale for 99 and i was like oh my god i kind of want um <laughs> 3d printer but it was all filament models which in their own right filament pre jesus filament 3d printers are a really cool tool they're very useful but for me i i would want to be able to print dice masters because i'm all about the dice making right now so in order to do that i need a resin printer so i again thought to myself not saying it aloud to instagram like uh, these filament printers are cool, but wow, a resin printer would be really nice. And then after a long amounts of time of thinking at Instagram, I finally got <laughs> an advertisement that was uh, a Creality printer for 99 bucks, And I was like, that is the best Dude, entry level price that, that you can ask for. That is a stupid price. Yeah. That's like the, phenomenal. The printer goes for one ninety nine, and it was like, we'll just take $100 off. It's like, fuck yeah, sign me up. So okay. hit that button, got that coupon, go to Micro Center, and I got me a 3D printer, and it is sitting behind me as we speak back there. Move that chair. Move that chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look <laughs> yeah, at that bad boy. There it is. Nice. Shit almost fell over. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, so I have, um, I have a 3D printer now, and I have been printing stuff. And there's so much to learn about 3D printing. Like, it's just... I was kind of surprised. I saw you tweet that you couldn't believe people just, like, put the, like, blueprints out there and you can just grab them. Yeah. I thought that was the whole premise of 3D printing because people share all of it. Yeah. I, I didn't know that so much of it was just free. Like, it's just out there. You can go to thingiverse.com and type in anything you desire, and somebody will have made a 3D print of it. Like, like, I did that. It's so cool. Like That sounds like the least gate-kept craft <laughs> of all time. Yeah, absolutely. I was worried that I was going to have to have, like, this whole adventure and journey of learning how to do shit. But there's just, like, YouTube videos galore. There are people that are just giving out free models to print and lots of tutorials. And That's t- awesome. It's amazing. There's resources galore. And I'm just, like neck deep in learning about 3d printing i'm so excited okay. um i have already printed up a set of dice masters for d6s sweet um i previously talked previously talked about these in another episode i think where it's um like eight different pip styles so instead of just being like yes. the regular dots on the things i have some that look like little beehives i've got some that look like little twinkly sparkles i got hearts i got diamonds i got a lot of yes. different stuff okay. but yeah, so I have printed the masters for them. I have to, like, sand them and finish them and then make the mold so that I can then make the resin dice out of them. Okay. So it's a process, but I'm just so excited. There's possibilities. There's endless possibilities, and they're all at my fingertips. Did I show you the test file that I printed? I was going to say, what is the first thing that you printed? So I wanted to print dice first because, okay. of course, I did. But yeah. I didn't know, like, is the printer ready to go out of the box? Or do I need to to like tweak settings or something? So I just printed the test file and I was like, okay, the Eiffel Tower, we'll print that. That's cute. Yeah. And I printed myself a little Eiffel Tower that's like about, I would say six inches tall or so. Okay. How long do you think a six inch tall Eiffel Tower took me to print? I mean, days. 
Just about. I'm yeah. Gonna three days. <laughs> it took 19 hours, which Woo. is longer than I thought it was going to take. I was like, we'll just print up an Eiffel Tower real quick. That'll take like six hours. And no, 19. And yeah. like, I didn't want to stop the print halfway. So I just, you know, let it do its thing. <laughs> But just, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, just good night, Eiffel Tower. I'll see you in the morning. But um, yeah, it printed and uh, I ruined it because <laughs> I know I, I, I mean, it's not ruined. It's just like permanently sticky because you have to cure them in a specific way. Like, oh, because it's resin. It's resin. But like, so it, the way that UV resin works in these printers, it's a UV thing. There's a plate underneath okay. it that's like just a, a see-through glass plate and okay. then the resin sits in like a glass vat on top of that and little tiny uv lights shoot up from underneath the glass plate into the pixel of resin that you're hardening so okay. it like layer by layer cures these tiny little bits of resin Ooh, and okay. the the object just kind of like rises out of the goo over the course of the 19 hours or whatever yeah and when you're done you still have like the gooey uv resin attached to the outside of it so okay. you have to break the part off of the actual machine with like a little palette knife and then rinse it off in some isopropyl alcohol. And it's got to be like the pure shit. I had to buy like medical grade isopropyl alcohol to clean this stuff with. Fucking 100% grade shit. It's 99%. I was like, good Lord. It's, it's isopropyl up in here. Like it, it stinks to be honest. Dude, <laughs> but, I bought some 92 one time and it was fucked up. Yeah. Like it's, it's potent stuff. Um, so yeah, you have to clean it off with the IPA, which is what they call it in the biz. Um, and then you have to finish curing it in the sun and, okay. Or you can, they try to sell you so many like accessories and I'm, I'm on the verge of having just like a full problem in here because I want to have like a a station to cure the stuff at. I want to have a station to clean the stuff at. Yeah. Like I need it. Yeah. Like it's, it's easy enough to just rinse it off in a Tupperware full of ice propyl, but why not have an ultrasonic cleaner that just really gets in all the little pieces parts and like cleans it out real good. Yeah. Why not? And then why not have a curing chamber that's like controlled UV light that you can set it. I want intense UV light for three minutes instead of just being like, it's a cloudy day. It should cure in a couple hours outside. Like, I hope this glows in the dark later. I don't know. (laughs) I hope the bird doesn't run off with my dye. Like, yeah. So there, there are things that I need to probably put in the budget for the future but i've got like a whole table set up behind me here um i had this old painting that i no longer wanted to hang on my wall so i screwed legs to it last night and was like now i have a table um (laughs) so that's what's happening behind me yeah it's just i've got like a whole station and i feel like i also want a filament printer but don't tell my husband that yet (laughs) because oh man I i mean when when you said you had the resin one i was like i didn't know that existed yeah yeah because i was like i thought you had to buy the little ropes right i I guess they're called filament but i was like yeah the ropes you buy the ropes (laughs) the little spools yeah you put the ropes in it come on you know (laughs) that's like how i thought it was yeah that's that's all the the stuff that you see on tiktok basically is just like rope critters so then i guess i have a question about it then ask me anything i'm so full of knowledge right now (laughs) because i was gonna say what what astounds me about 3d printing Uh uh-huh is how you can print joints into stuff yeah like like you can print the little slug thing but like it actually is connected and shakes on itself yes and it's that detailed can you print joints and like curvy bits and all that kind of stuff into a resin print or is that more like a stationary object thing as far as i know i think you can do anything with resin that you would do with filament Okay. But I don't 100% know. <laughs> because I saw one of a guy who did a dragon, and of course my mind went... Shenron. Shenron, dude. And oh my god, the scales were so detailed. And you yeah. even said, like, your uh, Eiffel Tower was so detailed, right? It is really detailed. Like, that's the thing with resin, is that you can get a lot finer details than you can with filament. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So that, that's why you need it for dice, because dice are so tiny and specific. Ah. Uh... And you can't okay. really, like, sand down filament in the way that you can resin. Gotcha. Because, yeah, they printed this dragon, but it... You know the the old snake toys where, like, you held the tail and you could yeah. kind of shake it and they'd move? That yeah. dragon thing did that. That's so, I'm so like, cool. But you literally just hit print and it built, like, 
like ball bearing joints inside yeah. the middle of this thing. <laughs> it's wild. I find that fascinating. So it's like, could I do a joint in a resin print? I think so. I don't know. Probably. You should try like a little <laughs> tiny like fidget toy one. Baby slug. And then that would be... And I just... Because, you know, you said like the resin was still sticky. Like how like fast you have to cure it to make sure it, you know, the little parts don't stick together like it right. sounds it sounds trickier yeah there's I guess definitely my thought. there's a learning curve to the machine for sure like i'm probably gonna tweak settings as i get to know it better but f- as far as right now i'm just really loving it i'm dipping my whole head in not into the resin fat because that's toxic but like yeah that's probably you know, bad into the hobby <laughs> no i'm so happy you got one because yeah i'm thrilled i mean i've always wanted one just for yeah. stupid shit it's so cool like you just you have an idea and you're like i wonder if that exists and you go to the internet and you type in like whatever you're thinking followed by the letters stl and that gets you <laughs> a number of things that people have already thought of and created it's so yeah. cool i love it i have wanted a 3d printer for many many years yeah and the first thing that was always my print was printing me and Ferdin some Gears of War cog tags. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can buy them, but, like, they're expensive and that's stupid. Right. <laughs> when I could just make some and yeah. it's better, you know? Yes. But, like, my idea has always been 3D printer cog tags for me and Ferdin and then sky's the limit from there, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's... I, I want to know so much about this. It's so cool. Like, Richard's really into it, too, because there's a a Star Wars tabletop game that you can play called Star Wars Legion. It's basically, like, Warhammer 40K, but Star Wars. Okay. And, like, I'm going to print him a bunch of figures for that. (laughs) Hell yeah, man. They're just out there on the internet, and you can do that kind of stuff. Yeah, why not? That's Why not? See, it's so phenomenal. You just got to buy the material. Boom. Yeah. Good to go. And the material is cheaper than I thought it was going to be. Like, I bought myself, like, a a smart bottle size, like, you know, smart water bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Like that size bottle of resin for 37 bucks. And I was like, I'll go through this in a couple of prints. And okay. I've used $2 worth of resin so far. Damn. Yeah. Because okay. the, 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 the program is so cool, Robert. You plug in. Okay. So you put the file in there. You plug okay. in what your printer is, what kind of resin you bought. And then it tells you like, you're going to use this much resin. This is how much the resin costs because you put it in the price. Like I paid this for this amount of resin. Here's how much you're using like broken down. And then it'll tell you like, yeah, I like that. It's so cool. You would, (laughs) you would be obsessed with this program. It's called G2 box or chai two box, depending on what YouTube you're watching. But, Oh my God. I'm, I'm ready to just like, my mind is open. (laughs) My third eye is craving. I'm learning so much. As you learn, I think at some point I would like, I would like a pro and con of resin versus the filament. Okay. Before I decide which one I would like. Because I would like yeah. to get one. You should get a filament one because I have the resin one. And then we'll just be buddies. I see. There you go. Uh, there's one on Instagram for $99. <laughs> like, I mean, that's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. You can print bigger stuff with it. It's not as toxic. It doesn't stink. Oh, because I was about to ask. Like, you said something about the fumes. So I yeah, can just the fumes put it right are here. fucking bad. <laughs> Jinx is going to be fine. <laughs> Phenomenal. Yeah. I have... I have um. I have like a fan in my window whenever I'm printing and it just like sucks all the air out of yeah. the room and I have to close the room so the cats don't get in here. But yeah, it's, it's fumey. I don't think it's toxic fumes, but I don't know if it's But I mean, it's great. stank though. Yeah. It's not probably good to breathe in. So yeah, I avoid breathing it as much as I can. <sighs> I mean, I did just say I paid off a whole bunch of cards, man. You I should got, get a 3d printer. <laughs> I got 99 bucks. <laughs> We got to go to a break before we start spending more money. Yeah, please. Everybody's got their own weird things that their grandparents are called. And why is it always grandparents, though? It is always grandparents because there's not like a delineated name for them. Like you have grandma and grandpa, but you have like granny and gramps. and. Yeah, because I call my grandma grandma. Like no D. It's a G-R-A-M-M-A. Grandma. Yeah. Because so many people just pick words. Like so Taylor, she wants to go by Tia. I think. That's aunt in Spanish, right? Yeah. Oh, no. She wanted to go. Oh, yeah, because I ruined it for her. Oh, no. I don't, like, want to out that, but I guess I have to now. Now you gotta. She wanted, because she's Taylor and was wanted to go by Tia and stuff, she wanted to go by, like, TT, right? 
because when I tell the dogs to go potty, I go TT and poo poo. Oh no. <laughs> and she's like, all I'll hear is that you're telling people to go piss. Like I can't have people call me that now. <laughs> to like be I've fair, totally ruined it for her. TT and poo poo are good grandma grandpa names. <laughs> Titi poo poo! <laughs> oh, it's me! I'm the poo poo guy! <laughs> you would totally it's go poopy by poo poo! <laughs> Not a person! Oh my god! It's poopy time! That's 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 how I would announce every time I like walk in the door. Like it's granddaughter's birthday party, just kicking the door. It's poopy time! <laughs> Jose's gonna love this opener. God, man. why is it's poopy time not on a sticker or a shirt already? <laughs> I don't know, but it really down. needs to be. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little bit of the pre-ramble. If you did, you can get the full bonus episode by going on over to patreon.com slash Y-M-B-T-O-A-P and signing up to be a patron. You get all kinds of goodies. You get the pre-ramble, the Discord to hang out with us. Uh, and then if you sign up a little bit higher, you get some extra reviews that we do. Tons of good stuff. And we just love having you guys there because... We just love interacting with you guys, and you guys spark us to want to make more stuff for you. Uh, but if you are so sparked by us and you just want a little bit more, you can go over to the Yimtope Peril store, get you some Yimtope gear. That link is in our show notes. We got all kinds of stuff. It's getting hot outside. We got some tank tops for you with several new logos that we have going on, several that we may have to put in there now that we're talking about more logos with ourselves. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, go get you out of tank, rep you some stuff, and, again, thank you to all of you supporters. We love you guys so, so much. You don't understand. No matter how many times we tell you, it's never enough. And with that, let's get you on back to the regularly scheduled content. How do I want to open this for you? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm going to just say this real quick. Okay. I went and saw Top Gun Maverick. All right. That movie has... Zero percent reason to be that good. <laughs> okay. Do you want my honest opinion? I do. I want your full and honest opinion. It's like a 10 out of 10. Really? It's stupid. It's <laughs> stupid how good that movie is. It looks... Like, I don't know, man. It looks... Okay. I have a, a little bit of a quiz for you. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into the quiz and we'll go from there. Let's bust it open. This is your guide to how much you should like Top Gun Maverick. Okay. okay. Question one. Have you seen Top Gun? No. Okay. So you cannot rate Top Gun. Okay. I have seen Top Gun. Yes. That movie's about a six, man. Okay. It's just a movie. <laughs> yeah. There is nothing special about the original Top Gun. What about the homoerotic volleyball scene? I mean, it's fine, (laughs) but like as a movie, not a lot happens. Okay. I think you had to be there at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? That movie has so many catchphrases, but like when you watch it, you're like, I mean, yeah. (laughs) They sure do fly those planes. There's, you know, like, I feel the need, the need for speed. That's from Top Gun. Like everyone's heard that. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, there's nothing special. There's, like, one thing about that movie that is important or that really matters. Because me and Taylor watched it before we saw Top Gun Maverick. Uh-huh. She was pretty disinterested the whole time. And when this one thing happened, she actually did just, like, jump up and exclaim. She goes, what? <laughs> what? And was, okay. like, floored by what happened. What that happened? That is a 40-year-old movie. Oh, my God. I think it's safe to discuss it. Yeah. <clears throat> In the original Top Gun, his his wingman and best friend dies. Uh huh. They're doing. So I mean, they're at a school learning to be better pilots. I didn't know this until I rewatched it again, which I thought was cool. It's based on a real naval fighter school. Okay. So I guess it it says like in on like March third, nineteen sixty nine, the naval. Academy made, like, the place for the best pilots to be, and, like, the top 1% get to go there. This school is called Top Gun, or whatever, okay. right? So that's the whole premise, is that they're at the best, like, pilot school that exists on the planet. Yeah. They, they are the Top Guns, right? So he's at the school learning stuff, and during an exercise, their jet spins out, 
and when they eject, his partner shoots straight up and hits the glass, and it, like, kills him instantly. Oh, my God. And, you know, I mean, his best friend died while they were doing this exercise. It's a horrible scene. Like, it's very sad. Right? Yeah. And his wife and child had just come to the base to hang out with him, and he has oh to go say, God. like, hey, you know, your husband and my best friend are dead now. Just snapped like, his neck midair. No big Yeah, game. it sucks, right? And so that's the whole thing. Well, the whole point of Top Gun Maverick is that kid is in Top Gun now. Oh, okay. So there's your whole, like, ooh, what's going to happen? And that's the only reason why I cared about the new one. So it's the legacy. It is a legacy. Now, <clears throat> number two. Give me a one out of tens for all these, okay? How do you all feel right. about Tom Cruise? Zero. <laughs> a zero? I don't like Tom Cruise. You don't like any of his movies? Uh, he just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know. I think it's a Scientology. <laughs> no, I think it's because of his tooth. Oh, maybe. Yeah, but see, I don't dig into his home life. Like, I just like his movies. Okay. Like, I don't care that he's Scientologist, because I'm not Scientologist, and he's not making me one, so... Okay. He can keep that to himself, right? Sure. The day, like, he makes a movie preaching to me about why I should be one, that's when I'll start being like, eh, I don't know, buddy. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. So that doesn't bother me. But okay, so you're zero. Yeah, I don't, I don't care for Tom Cruise. I don't we're avoid not, his movies. We're not faring very well on the scale here. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your shirt, by the way? It's a David Bowie shirt. Hmm. How do you feel about David Bowie? I love David Bowie. <laughs> Where would you rate that? Uh, 1,000? Okay. We're picking up on the Top Gun Maverick scale. Why? <laughs> we're picking up on the Top Gun Maverick scale. Okay. So remember, Jennifer Connelly is in it. Fuck yes. The scene that she shows up in for the first time, David Bowie's playing in the background. Oh my god, amazing. Taylor instantly goes, are they playing David fucking Bowie with her? <laughs> <laughs> like, her intro scene is her saying, I love that man, and my career comes from that man. Like, oh, it's so good. It's fucking good, dude. Uh, I don't remember what song they were playing. Okay. It wasn't Labyrinth, because that would be too on the nose. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> but, like, when she shows up on screen, it's in a bar, and he's playing in the background. Oh, that's so cool. So I was cool. like, boom, selling Kelsey a little bit here. All right. Final question. <laughs> How do you feel about Star Wars? Specifically, <laughs> A New Hope. Um, what? <laughs> I mean, that's my f favorite one of the originals, so... Okay. Where do we put that? I mean, like, like a 10 out of 10? Okay. I have All no right. idea how these dots connect into Top Gun. Oh, they so do, man. <laughs> what the fuck? You're making this really hard. I'm gonna say, because you don't have the pre... You have enough knowledge with knowing that Goose died. Uh -huh. that's, his, that's his friend. I think for this one, because of how severe <laughs> the Tom Cruise <laughs> score is. I mean, I don't hate him. I don't, I don't like him. <clears throat> I'm going to put you at like a seven. Okay. All right. The entire premise of this movie. Are you ready? No. <laughs> <clears throat> the ending of the movie is there's an enemy base. We have to destroy this weapon they're building. Okay? So they have a Death Star. <laughs> they, they are housing it in this mountain range. Okay. Right? Okay. We need to train these Top Gun pilots to stay under the radar of the anti-air uh, fire stuff, right? Okay. They are going to have to snake along a trench <laughs> to then get over the mountainside. You have two shots to break open this hole. And a second shot to go in the hole and destroy okay. the enemy weapon. The ending of this movie is the trench run from what Star the Wars. Fuck? Why? <laughs> There's no reason why, but the All parallel right. is very clear. Tom Cruise is just like, you know what was a good movie? Star Wars. Can we do that? But planes. And they did. <laughs> and it's real good. <laughs> and it doesn't stop there. Oh, my God. Because I brought up the parallels for star wars to this movie and i was like she goes you're right there that's like the whole trench run thing and i was like and after they escape they get chased by the enemy what are they wearing they are wearing all black like fucking tie fighter pilots my god 
And they do the same like camera shot, just like right up front, where they're like, like just turn and shit and stuff. <laughs> it's the same fucking movie at the end. <laughs> it's so Star Wars at the end because I remember thinking right before they started doing the mission. Yeah. They have a dogfight scene, and I was getting really excited. And I've told you before, Star Wars does dogfight battles so good, so much better than any other franchise on this planet. I'm never yeah. that excited by that stuff. Right. And I was like on the edge of my seat again, and I was like, "This is almost as good as like a fucking Star Wars movie right now." <laughs> and then they do a trench run. Oh my God, that's crazy! And I was like, Kelsey might like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for you, I'm gonna put it at a seven, though. Like you will, you will have enjoyed your time. Okay. Probably not loved it, but that's a good movie, dude. All right. It's it's streaming, right? No. Oh. It is theater only and has made eight times its budget already. Holy shit. Okay. It's the highest rated movie of the year, I think, so far. What? Jesus. And is the number two grossing movie just behind Doctor Strange. Oh, my God. That's, that's wild. It's really good. <laughs> Do you know what my expectation was going in? Six out of ten? Seven out of ten. About like the first one. Like, they're going to fly some planes. Guys being dudes in planes. Like, that's <laughs> it, right? Yeah. I went only wanting to know what's going to happen because his son, and this is how much I didn't remember the original. I was like, does Tom Cruise even know that, like, his best friend had a kid? Like, what's the mm. deal? Like, what's going to be the relationship? He's hanging out with that kid in the first movie. Like, he okay. <laughs> greatly knows this family and this child. Yeah. So seeing him come into this academy is a big deal for him. I kind of forgot that he literally knew this kid. All right. So it's like a big deal. And Miles Teller is the kid grown up Oh, now. shit. Okay. Fuck. He did good. I but love he's Miles a, Teller. He kind of is just good, though. He is just good. Like, he's a pretty good guy. Like, I like, a, I've never seen a movie of his that I didn't like. Yeah. I will say that. Like, Whiplash alone made me fall in love with the man. That movie is so good. I think for it to be the 10 out of 10, you gotta have, you gotta have that first movie knowledge. Okay. To care about, like, how that story's progressing in this. Yeah. And I think you gotta have a little bit of the Tom Cruise love, because... <laughs> They put these actors through the actual G's of fighter pilot stuff. Yeah. They like actually flew planes, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Dude. Uh, they, they put Tom Cruise in 10 G's, man. That's, That's too many. Yeah. Like, cause you black out at like nine. My God. But the whole premise of this movie is the mission is so dangerous. You have, have to, to do sign things. A waiver. Basically, when they finish the mission, the planes that they're using will be so warped by the Gs they go under, they're <laughs> unusable. What? This is okay. The Gs are going to warp this fucking metal plane around your body, but you're going to be fine. Well, they're hoping. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's essentially a suicide mission. Like, they kind of are expecting none of these people will come home. Oh my God. But Tom Cruise is like, well, actually, my best friend's kid is here, so I have to figure out how can I make them come home. Okay. Because I can't send my friend's kid to die. After so you kill. So he's, he's trying to, like, figure out a way to do it. Okay. It's really cool. So they do the trench run, and they have to climb up the face of a mountain, and the fastest way to go back down is not to just swoop down. They invert the plane and swoop up and then flip back over. It's the quickest way over. So they do a barrel roll. <laughs> and then they have to shoot the thing, and then it's an immediate climb up like a mountain face. And when you pull up that steep, by the time they reach the top, they're going to hit like 10 Gs. Oh It'll warp the wings of the plane. And hopefully you don't black out and die. Okay. And John, and John Hamm is in it too. Like who doesn't fucking what? like John Hamm, dude? All right. It's so good. I want to see it again. <laughs> and I'm actually pissed that I didn't see it before when it was in the XD. Cause I oh, think man. it would have been way better. It probably would have been intense in XD, honestly. Yeah, because Jurassic Park came out when I saw this, so that took over oh, man. the XD theater. So yeah. I missed my shot. But Top Gun Maverick, if you have the mildest affinity for the first one, okay. because my affinity is not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it twice now. 
That's in my times. entire life. Oh, but Maverick? Oh, I'll watch that forever. Okay. That's so it, a fucking good... I mean, it's Star Wars. I watch <laughs> Star Wars all the time, you know? And I could literally talk about this movie a lot, but they do one thing, one thing that I really love. When the moment is serious, they don't spoil it. Okay. There's like a really tense dogfight where it's like, this is a problem. Things are yeah. dangerous. There's no music. Ah, Good. It's just, like, the sounds of them screaming in their headphones to each other, like, hey, on your six, and they do all the shit, and you just hear all the stuff happening, and it's chaotic and scary. And there's no Kenny Loggins. Yeah. No. To the... That's how that scene should be, and they did that. Okay. But the beginning of, of, of this movie does open the exact same way as the first one. Okay. Being that I watched it, like, two days before, I was like, are they playing the wrong movie? <laughs> it's the same opening and it opens with fucking danger zone. Okay. It's all and it starts right into it. I'd be like, but if I said that song was not a banger, we, when we were watching the first one, cause you know, that song was written for that movie for the movie. Yeah. Tom Cruise is in his sex scene and they're playing the take my breath away. Oh my God. That song. T Taylor's like, that's a good song. It's like, I was written for this movie. And she's like, was it fuck? really? Yeah, it was written for Top Gun. What? My Top God. Gun had like three songs written for it that are fucking jams, dude. Wow. Top Gun's like, it's important for when it came out. Yeah. Like, it's a cultural thing. Like, yeah. people should know Top Gun. I, I don't. <laughs> and then this movie won me over a hair more because Lady Gaga wrote the theme song for this Ooh, one. Nice. And I was like, I like Lady Gaga. She's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> She's not Sia for me, but she's pretty damn close. Okay. So I was happy you wore the David Bowie shirt because like, oh, you playing into my hands tonight. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's definitely when it hits like HBO Max or something. Yeah. I think you need to check this one out. All right. Yeah, I'll stream it. It's pretty good. Um, hey, remember how I had COVID? <laughs> hey, you know I haven't heard you cough. Yeah, it's shocking, right? Like the yeah. editing for this one's going to be so much easier. <laughs> I finally, I don't, ugh, I don't want to, I don't want to say it's over because I'm going to have to knock on so much wood. But no, like, don't say that. Just say <sighs> it's better. It's getting better. Finally, I feel like I'm finally at the end of this stupid road. It's been like six weeks since I got sick. Um, yeah, it's been a minute. It's been some time, and. I, it's just been, I have gone to the virtual doctor a couple of times now. I just went this week again. And again, they, I like had to go over all my allergies with them. And I was like, okay, I take Claritin. I take Zysol. <laughs> I take a prescription allergy pill singular. I take my inhaler. I have a nebulizer. I'm doing all this shit. I still have this cough. It's been happening only since after I got COVID. It is not related yeah. to allergies. What can you do for me? And this woman was like, well, we have this, like, cough drop. And I was like, don't fucking I give me. have <laughs> cough drops. I was like, don't give me the benzonitate again, because that's what the last piece person gave me. It did nothing at all. Like, it I stopped. I see her face. She, like, pulled it out. And you said the name. And she saw, like, the label. And was like, oh, shit, she knows. Basically. Okay. Yeah. And she, God, after I said that, she was like, well, you can, you can double up and take, like, two at a time. And I was like, give me something to knock out this cough. <laughs> I don't want to cough Good. anymore. I'm tired of it. And she was like, well, you can use like a, a humidifier at night. And I was like, I am. I'm doing the most. I'm doing every like wives tale. I'm doing yeah. everyone's advice. Everybody's like, put Vicks on your feet. I'm doing the shit, guys. I've saged egg under the bed. Everything. <laughs> I'm doing it all. Please give me medicine. And finally, I got a prescription for some pride in the zone. Get some steroids in these lungs. Get some... Just open the shit, you know, get the stuff out. Yeah. And I feel like I am finally crossing the road. Like, I feel like my voice is coming back. I'm able to talk at length without going into coughing nice. fits. I don't get just tired at the end of the day because I'm out of breath all the time. I'm starting to feel better. And it, it has been a long time since I have felt this good at the end just of... good. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, we've been recording for close to three hours now, and I feel pretty fine. <laughs> yeah. Good. <sighs> Yeah, because uh, I think it was, like, the last show when I was saying, like, you look like you're just getting beat up. Like, yeah, I was out like, of breath, man. Yeah. 
but yeah, I'm feeling good now. Like still, um, you know, taking the inhaler and doing the, the shit that's not medicine, you know, yep. but I mean, inhalers are medicine, but like the, the, the general stuff that the I have to stuff. do in my day to day life yeah. just to keep, you know, allergies at bay, but it, it sucks how much you have to fucking jump through hoops to be taken seriously as a woman sometimes. Like <laughs> I got the same medicine that my husband got six weeks ago. That he and got day one. Yeah. <laughs> like they were like, oh, you have COVID, have some prednisone. And for me, I was like, oh, you're like six weeks past COVID. Mm. Cough drops might help. <laughs> you can take two at a time though. God, I, I know it's exhausting ladies, but we got to advocate for ourselves. <laughs> like you got to do it. No one else is going to do it for you. So just call your doctor and yell until you get the medicine that you want. Well, so Taylor is actually feeling kind of lately. Yeah. And she went today. And I was like, like, do you want someone to go with you to, like, corroborate things? Like, yeah, to make a bigger stink. And she was like, nah, I got it. And they said, um, eh, what you have, we can't do anything for because it's viral. So just go wait it out. Go home. So she go literally went. Yeah, just go home. What a fucking wait. I had a viral thing one time and I still got steroids. I'm pretty sure they gave me something. It's fucking wild. Like, it was like I don't an know what antiviral or something. It's just, it's depressing sometimes to be, I don't know, a feminine person in medicine. Like, like just, see, I, I'm upset that I even feel like saying, you know, well, if, well, if I'd have went with her, we'd have gotten something. Yeah. But it like, sucks from both that's parties. true, though. Yeah. Like, it, it is true. <laughs> it, I wish there was a way to circumnavigate it, but like the last couple of doctor's appointments I've been to, I just take Richard with me because I know that like having yeah. a masculine presence in the room, the doctor's going to listen more for whatever reason. Yeah. I attributed it to the Handmaid's Tale thing. The like last show, I think well, I'm going to say yeah. it again. Like it's, that's like the way it is like right now. Yeah. That's so gross. I don't it understand. is gross. It sucks. And I hate it, but we got no, the pills. Sure. We're on the path. We're doing fine. Nice. Nice. Air in the lungs. <laughs> Love in the heart. <laughs> Life is good. Well, good. I think, I think this is one of the happiest shows we've had in a, quite a while. Yeah, we're having a good day, aren't we? <laughs> That's a good one, man. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I've been sipping this fucking Dr. Pepper. Like, it's getting Just better. Just feeling good. Every sip, dude. <laughs> Have you have you looked at me throughout the yes. show? I'm like, <laughs> you're just like into that pepper. <laughs> like it's just in my hand, like cap off, and I'm just like doing little tiny just, sips, like mm, mm. it's giving you life. Mm. It's like I want to go get some more. I would like to try it. I'll have and to grab some for this weekend. And it's limited edition too, so like oh shit, I might fall in love with it. And they're like, eh, fuck that flavor. Yeah, because I was actually looking for my co- my diet coke with Splenda again. Oh, really? Did they bring and that back? It says it's not discontinued, but it says oh. sold nowhere. Okay. <laughs> so, like, I stopped buying it during COVID. Right. And it's like, well, no one's buying it, so let's stop selling it, I guess. I searched every zip code around here, and it was nowhere. Man, why are sometimes the good things just hard to find? I hate that. Like, I still have yet to find Liquid Death in person anywhere. Oh, my God. Oh, we're starting to see it everywhere out, out here, but <sighs> I'm buying it out here. So <laughs> <laughs> they're like, somebody's really buying it up in this zip code. Keep supplying. I'm telling you, they say, you know, speak with your wallet for shit. Yeah. That shit is true. Buy your liquid deaths. They will stock them. Don't go see live action Disney movies. Hopefully they'll <laughs> quit making them. Like, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Money talks. Actually, speak into that one more thing. We okay. are watching the Fantastic Beasts movies. Oh, really? So I remember Taylor didn't want to go see it in the theater because we didn't yeah. really want to like give it the money. Right. But it's on HBO Max, so it's it's mm. like it's not giving it money. I don't know. <laughs> but we can still watch it, so we're watching them. Okay. How do you feel and, about them? Well, I mean, I love the first one. Yeah. I love the first one. I saw it in the second theater one. like twice. The second one was garbage. The second one was not as bad as I remember. Okay. Me and Taylor both were like, that wasn't as bad. Still a three out of ten. Like, okay. it's not good. It was like a 2.9 before. Like, yeah, I'll probably just still skip bad. It. Just tell me when you're doing it, and I can tell you what you need to remember going into the third one. All right. Because it's, it's, it's a waste of two hours and 15 minutes. 
Yeah, no thank you. There are cute things in it that are like, that's that's nice. Oh, I met a cool, like, Chinese dragon creature thing. It's very Ew. cool. It looks great. But is that worth the rest of the movie? You know? Yeah. So uh, I was telling her, oh, I was reading, because you know I always read about my movies. Always gotta. I was like, did you hear that they canceled the fourth one? Oh, they were so, going to have a fourth one? Yeah, there was going to be a fourth one. Oh, shit. But what I read, it said because of the poor reception of two and three, they just decided to nix four. Okay. And Taylor's like, I doubt that. She's mm -hmm. like, you know, the backlash from the LGBT community and the like complete like banning of this movie. Banning's not the word I'm looking for. The complete, like, the community Let's... did not accept it. <laughs> um, right? Boycotting? That's it. That's my word. That's the word. Yeah. Like, the way it was boycott and it didn't really make its money is probably it. And I was like, you're probably right. But no one's going to actually say that. That's like the whole Tim Allen Buzz Lightyear thing. <sighs> yeah. We're, we're not going to give you the real reason. Here's, here's like a PR reason. Yeah, exactly. You know? Oh, well, you know, the Rotten Tomato scores aren't great, so we're just not going to make it. No. Yeah. I think. And I didn't, I didn't realize that the J.K. Rowling talk stuff was so recent. I thought it was so much older than that. What, she's her like, no. whole business about being anti-trans and all that? Yeah, she's like, no, that was 2020. That was like COVID time. Yeah, it was. It just feels I thought so stretched it was before and squashed. That. Yeah. <laughs> no. I was like, I thought that was like 10 years ago, and we just no. now caught up with it. Okay. I mean, she's just been getting progressively weirder. Like, she started saying shit like just Dumbledore was gay the whole time, and like, I mean, cool to have gay representation, but at the same time, you could have made it more obvious or, or have him mention it or something in the books. Yeah. Not just like, oh, secretly that character was gay, therefore I am an ally. Yeah. And then she started getting into the shit like people just poop in their pants and magic it away. And like, oh, yeah, all that crap. And then she just completely came out as a turf. So, uh, yeah, you know. she's so, been a mess. <laughs> I didn't realize like this whole franchise has been marred by that starting. Yeah. I just thought these movies were getting really bad. And they are bad. <laughs> but, like, okay. I didn't really... I thought that was such old hat news. Yeah. With her. I didn't think it was tied to almost this franchise. But it, like, intricately is. Yeah. So, I'm 100% on Taylor's boat with... N we know why it's canceled. Okay. But, yeah. The fourth one is gone. That's not going to happen. All right. And maybe it's for the best. Probably. But we haven't watched the third one yet. So we're going to watch that soon and see if it's good. But it has a bad score, too. So Really? I'm hoping it's good, but I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see. And All right. Yeah. Let's get out of here. You ready to magic away this poop? Oh, yeah. It's poopy poop. time. Poopoo is ready to magic away this poop. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we ask you every single week, please tell your friends about us and help us grow this audience. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your very most favorite platform so you never ever miss an episode because we release weekly, every single Monday, week in, week out, always here for you on Mondays. If you have a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, that helps us reach many more lovely listeners just like you. And while you're out there doing all that stuff, don't forget you can find us and friend us on all the other social medias. We are YMBTOAP on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and a Twitch. T -t -t Twitch. All right. We ain't been on Twitch in a minute, but we do have one coming up for you this month. We certainly found a, do. Found a cool game. I was sent it a couple times from several people and it was on sale. I got it. I got the game for you guys. So on the 26th, June 26th, that is a Sunday. What? Yes. Very different. We are Saturday streaming people, but not this <laughs> time, guys. We're going to do it on a Sunday for you, 6 o'clock. We're going to do a weird little game. It's called Little Misfortune. I've seen a couple things about this game, and I think it's going to be a hilarious little ride. I don't know it. what to expect from this game. I also don't. Uh, the gist of the clips that I've seen on TikTok lead me to believe that it's going to be absolutely off the walls. So, <laughs> Yeah, like I think it's a game where you think you can't anticipate what's going to happen, but it's going to throw you a <laughs> curveball every fucking time. Yes. It is like a two, three hour game. It's five hours if you just 
completely thoroughly flesh the whole thing out so tune in for like a little short nice good stream come hang out with us laugh with us this game looks like it's gonna be funny so again that is sunday june 26th at 6 p.m come hang out for little misfortune we're gonna have a good time i guess and again to our patrons love you guys so much we can't wait to see you guys in the stream chit chat with you about it in the discord after because we're always hanging out with you guys and if you want to hang out with us too after the stream think about joining the patreon you can get in for a pretty low price or jump in for a bit more and get some more content from us it's whatever whatever suits your needs and if you don't want to join that's cool too come come hang out with us in, in the stream and then throw us an email those are always free that's ymbtoap at gmail.com Send us what you think about the latest Twitch stream. Send us how fucking good Top Gun Maverick is. <laughs> and you're like, shit, I hate I hate Tom Cruise, but I love that movie. I want to know that. Are you a 3D printing machine? Kelsey mm. needs tips and tricks. Please. And don't um, tell me because then I will get the filament one. <laughs> Uh, don't forget also that we have a weekly series on YouTube called the Friday Roundup that comes out each and every Fridays. Uh, yes. we, we've been going a little bit longer with those. They used to be just 15 minute bites. So this last one, I think, was like 40. Yeah, it was like 48 minutes. Because <laughs> it's been a lot of gaming news coming out recently. So Yeah, we uh, did have Summer Games Fest, which has been overloading the world. Yes. Yeah, so get in there, listen to our thoughts, tell us what you want to hear in future Friday Roundups, send us an email about it, send us some comments. And of course, our theme song is The Green Maple Blows the Horn by Faraz. Check him out on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for listening and tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. How long before Robert gets that 3D printer? But we had one more important sound we wanted you to hear. I think the question is more, when am I going to grow out my own little Top Gun stash?